Will Chelsea bag their first home win over the Saints since December 2017, or will Southampton take the spoils back to the South Coast? Watch until the end of this preview to hear all of my thoughts on tomorrow's match. Hello people, welcome to my channel, welcome to another video, this is my preview for the match that will be taking place tomorrow afternoon at Stamford Bridge in the Premier League between Chelsea and Southampton with kickoff at 3pm UK time. So what I'm going to do for you guys in terms of this preview is that firstly I'll be giving you guys the Chelsea team news and only the Chelsea team news because that's just how I roll nowadays. I'll then be giving you guys my lineup based on the team news in which I shall be giving you guys very shortly. And lastly, I'll be giving you guys my score prediction. So without further ado, let's get straight into this preview. Let's do it, guys. So we shall kick this preview off by taking a look at the Chelsea team news. And um, before I dive into it, I'm just going to say that the majority of it is bad news, but there is some good news in there. So there's only one piece of information in regards to the Chelsea team and it concerns Rhys James, N'Golo Kante, Christian Pulisic and Mason Mount. And this story explains that Rhys James, N'Golo Kante and Christian Pulisic are still out. Of course, N'Golo Kante is still out um, because he's in isolation. It's going to take him 10 days. Um, some of them in which he has served, of course. But Rhys James and Christian Pulisic are both still out with ankle injuries, so um, there could be some. There could be it could be some time. Um, sorry, let me rephrase that. Give me a few seconds. It could be a good amount of time until we actually see them back in the team, um, and that's worrying because that would put that will put pressure on Thomas Tuchel in terms of um, in terms of selection. But yes, those three are out. But Mason Mount is back um, in the squad after recovering from a knock that he had. I'm not entirely sure what knock it was or what um, injury he had, but he's back in um, training and he is available for selection for tomorrow. Sorry, and he is back in um, um, contention for tomorrow's match, which is good because um, he is a player that will absolutely want to play in this game because he is from Portsmouth. But yes, that is it for the Chelsea team news. Yes, as I said, before I delivered it to you, the majority of it is bad is bad news, but there is some good news there. And that is it um, in terms of the Chelsea team news. But yes, um, we shall move on. Now we take a look at the lineup that I have decided to go with. And as always, we begin by talking about the formation that I've decided to go with. And yes, I have chosen to go with a 3-4-3. Three, three. Sorry, sorry about the noise in the background. Yes, I have chosen to, sorry. Yes, I have chosen to go with a 3-4-3 three, three because it is our best formation just now. Yes, it got exposed in our last two games. And yes, I have seen people advocating a back four system, um, which I can see. Um, where they're coming from but I don't believe that that's the best option for us because we don't have all of our players um, available and the players that aren't available are some of our best players as well so I don't believe that um, a formation change um, to a back four system would make sense but that's why I have gone over 3-4-3. Three, three. Um, we take a look at the personnel that I've decided to go with. Of course I've gone with Edouard Mendy and goal um, against Juventus he was definitely not at fault for the goal um, you can understand why he went down so low because he must have thought or in fact he did think that um, Federico Chiesa was going to either try and go around him or hit the ball low um, towards the bottom corners but he didn't he smashed it into the top left corner and like I said already Edouard Mendy was absolutely not at fault, not at fault for that um, no keeper would have saved that um, it was just poor defending from the defenders in front of him and the midfielders, I have to say. Um, but yes, Edouard Mendy does deserve to be in goal because he has been 
one of our best players this season. He's pulled off some brilliant saves in a lot of our recent games, I must say. Um, and he just deserves to be in this, in between the sticks. But yes, I've gone with Edouard Mendy in goal. I've gone with a back three of Cesar Aspilicueta, Andres Christensen and Antonio Rudiger. I do believe that um, we should be rotating this back three because of the amount of competitions we are going to be competing in this season. Um, I wouldn't really mind seeing Thiago Silva in the centre of that back three, but um, I do believe that Aspil sorry, I do believe that Cesar Aspilicueta should be playing as um, the right centre back because um, we do need someone um, to to be behind the. We do need a big presence in that position to cover for the player that. Sorry, to cover for the player that I've gone with in the right wing back position, which I'll get into shortly. But yes, that's the back three that I've gone with. I believe this back three can do a job on Southampton. We'll just have to see if that. We'll just have to see if not only does that back three start, but if they are capable of doing the job, which they should be. But yes, that's the back three that I've gone with. I hope all of that made sense. And I do apologise if you feel that I need to say that I digress. But I shall move on to the midfield four, including the two wing backs from right to left. And this midfield four consists of Callum hudson Odoi at right wing back. Um, you shall now see what I was saying about Cesar Aspilicueta playing in the right centre back position now. Jorginho, Mateo Kovacic, and Marcos Alonso. So that is the midfield four that I've gone with. I do believe that Callum hudson Odoi um, should be should be playing this one. We do need an extra attacking outlet in this formation because I have a feeling that um, Lukaku hasn't really been getting a lot of service because of the two players just in behind him not doing their jobs. And I do believe that Callum hudson Odoi bursting into um, good positions from that right wing back role could really help him out because not only does he have a lot of pace, but he has a good cross on him and he can get past players. Um, it's just about him actually showing it. I do believe that despite um, Jorginho and Mateo Kovacic not having the best of games recently, I do believe that they should start because um, right now that is our best midfield pairing. And I, I'm happy to give Marcos Alonso another chance despite him not having his best games recently. Um, I wouldn't mind if Ben Chilwell started, to be honest. Um, but that's who I've gone with in the midfield four. Um, one thing I'll also say is that I was um, saying to some of my friends that I wanted, um, or that I think Ruben Loftus-Cheek deserves to start, um, and he does. Um, if he does start tomorrow, then I'd be I'd be very happy. Um, but we move on to the front three now. I've gone with Mason Mount in the right forward position. I've gone with Romelu Lukaku up front by himself, no, not by himself. I've gone with Romelu Lukaku in the centre and I've gone with Timo Werner in the left forward position. I do believe that this is the front three that needs to start tomorrow because um, Mason Mount will definitely be up for this because, of course, he's um, from Portsmouth. And if you don't know already, Portsmouth and Southampton do not like each other, um, so he should be up for this game. Um, he has a decent goal-scoring record against Southampton as well. Um, Romelu Lukaku should be up front. I don't really have to say why. He's our best striker. Um, he's a physical presence and he can bring the players around him into play with his hold-up play. Um, need I say more? I don't think so. And I do believe that Timo Werner should be starting in the left forward position because I don't think that um, Kai Havertz or Hakim Ziyech deserve to play after their display against Juventus. Yes, Juventus did defend really well and you have to give them credit for that. But um, we have to be honest, they did they did give them um, some assistance in that. Um, they did give Kai Havertz and Hakim Ziyech did give Juventus some assistance in um, their bid to stop us from being able to attack efficiently because they were both poor on Wednesday. But yes, um, that's the lineup that I've gone with. Like I said, I wouldn't mind if Ruben Loftus Cheek or Ben Shaw will start tomorrow. I was going to put Ruben Loftus Cheek in my lineup, but I just didn't think that Thomas. I just don't think that Thomas Tuchel will start him. But who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. We'll just have to wait and see, won't we? But anyways, I'll give you guys a brief recap of the lineup that I've gone with. Um, starting off with the formation as always: a three-four-three, 
slash 3-4-2-1, depending on how you guys want to see it. Edouard Mendy in goal, a back three of Cesar Aspilicueta, Andreas Christensen and Antonio Rudiger, a midfield four including the two wingbacks from right to left of Callum Hudson-Odoi, Jorginho, Matteo Kovacic and Marcos Alonso, and I have gone with a front three from right to left of Mason Mount, Romelu Lukaku and Timo Werner. So that is the lineup that I've gone with. Please guys do drop your lineups in the comment section below and as always, I shall do my very best to respond. Here is a graphic showing you guys the formation that I've chosen and the players that I've chosen for my lineup. Now we finish off this preview by getting into my score prediction. Honestly guys, um, we need a win. We need a clean sheet as well because our defensive performance um, in our last two games um, or our defensive performances in our last two games have not been convincing enough, um, if at all. Um, this will be a difficult game. No game in the Premier League is easy. Let's have it right. Um, Southampton do have some great players in their, in their team. Yes, they've lost the likes of Danny Ames and Co, but... They have recruited pretty well, um, I take that back, they've recruited really well and they've had a decent start to the season so far. And as I've said already, they have a good record at Stamford Bridge. We have not beaten them at our home since December 2017 when Marcos Alonso scored a free kick in the dying minutes of the first half in Antonio Conte's second season. Um, which was almost four years ago now, so we need to beat them at Stamford Bridge, it's been far too long. But yes, I've gone over 2-0 Chelsea win. Um, I do believe that we have what it takes to go to Stamford Bridge and beat this Southampton team. One thing I will say though is that I wouldn't be surprised if we conceded because of the fact that the players seem to be low on confidence just now and they seem to be making some um, mistakes and other unforced errors which um, has led to the decline in their confidence um, in the last two games. But hopefully we can cut out the mistakes and put on a good performance for the attending fans and those watching. We'll just have to see. That's why I've won over 2-0 Chelsea win. Please do drop your score predictions in the comment section below. And as always, I shall do my very best to respond. That is it for this preview. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please do like, comment and subscribe to my channel if you're new. And I shall see you all very soon for some more videos. Come on you blues. Come on Thomas Tuchel. And peace.